We're talking today about the kind of prayer uh, that God answers. Now, I'm, I, need to, I need to tell you about something that's a little bit unusual before I get into it. This message is the ninth message in the series uh, that we've been going through based on Daniel. So it's the final one, number nine. But it also is number one in the next series. I've just got them mixed together, okay? So we are starting, we're ending one and starting one today. Same thing. The next one is seeking God for a breakthrough. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. The kind of prayer that God answers as we seek God for a breakthrough. Uh, Daniel prayed three times a day. We've seen that as we've been going through this series. And last week, uh, I challenged you to do the same thing. Pray to God. Take time out three times a day to pray to Him. Take that time and do that. I'm going to be asking you for a commitment today. You'll find a couple of cards uh, in your bulletin. I don't need you to do anything with them yet. As a matter of fact, I ask you not to. Just hold on to it until I get to that point in this message. But I will be asking you for a commitment. I'm going to be asking you to do this with me. To seek the face of God for the next 35 days. To be able to go to Him in prayer three times every day for the next 35 days and seek Him for a breakthrough in your life and for a breakthrough in our church. And I'm going to be asking you, will you pray with me three times a day for the next 35 days? Uh, you know, once you do that, it's going to become a habit. You do it for 35 days, you'll be doing it the rest of your life. And, uh, and what a great thing to be doing to stop and have a conversation with God three times at least. I mean, every day. You, don't, you know, when you pray, you don't have to get into some kind of prayer mode. You don't have to get your hands folded and your, your head bowed. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be talking to you about what Daniel did. I'm just all over the place this morning. He raised his face up to God. He prayed like this. And that's not a bad thing for us to do as I'll be talking about in a few moments. So, uh, today in Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 through 23, we're going to learn how to pray in a crisis. We're going to go through six steps of the kind of prayer that he prayed and the kind of prayer that God answers. So let's just jump right in with the first step, and that is, let God speak to me before I speak to him. Here's the principle. God always makes the first move in every area of your life. God always makes the first move. He initiates everything. We merely respond to what He initiates. It says in the Bible that we love because He first loved. 1 John 4.19 We love because He first loved us. We serve because God first served us. We give because God first gave to us. God only asks you to do what He has already done. He is the ultimate leader, is He not? He's the ultimate leader, and no leader asks you to go where He has not been. And so God says, I want you to love mankind because I love mankind. And God says, I want you to serve because I serve. And God says, I want you to give because I give. And so we pray because God first made promises to us. I've told you many times there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. And so we pray, we claim those promises. God, you promised this, now I'm asking for it. And so we go to Him and ask Him to do what He's promised us that He would do. So how do you listen to God before you talk to Him? Well, you listen to Him by reading this book. You listen to Him by hearing from Him through the Word of God, through the Bible. So isn't it logical then that before we pray, we should read? Amen. We should hear from God first and then go to Him in prayer. That's what Daniel did. Now, we've been going through Daniel's life. Daniel was taken into captivity when he was 15 years old. And he's now been in Babylon for 70 years. He is 85 years old. And he's been through a lifetime of tests, 
one test after another. Uh, the Persians at this time have defeated Babylon. So once again, Daniel has a new boss. And every time he has a new boss, he serves well, he gets promoted. But now at this time, Daniel wants to go home. Daniel wants to go back to his land. He wants to go back to Jerusalem. He wants to do that before he dies. And he's been reading the book of Jeremiah. He's been in the Bible. He's been reading his Bible before he prays to God. And he knows that the time is up. Seventy years have passed. And Jeremiah has told him uh, through his writing that it would be 70 years. He knows the time is up. But he also knows that his people have not repented. And they have not turned back to God. And so Daniel is concerned that, uh, that God may just leave them there. He had said 70 years, but they hadn't done their part of the bargain. And so they've not repented, and he's concerned that they may stay. Let's look at Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. You know, you and I are never going to pray effectively until we read God's word daily. It seems like most of the world has gotten away from the Bible, has gotten away from reading it and trying to understand it and, and applying it to their lives. But if you want to know the answers to life, you've got to get into the Word of God. You've got to understand what Jesus taught. You've got to understand what the prophets taught. You've got to understand what Paul taught. Those things are so important. Jesus said in John chapter 15 verse 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. You know, people like to stress that last part. Whatever you ask, it will be done for you. But they tend to forget the first part. In order to have that happen, you've got to remain in Jesus and the words of Jesus have to remain in you. So if you're not getting answers to prayer, Maybe you should ask yourself, am I connected? Am I in Jesus? Are his words abiding in me? Uh, you'll, you'll get more answers the more you fill your mind and the more you memorize scripture. But if you're ignorant of scripture, you don't even really know how to ask. If you don't know the promise, how can you ask for it? And so you must learn what the word of God says, I want to help you through this message today and through the next, for the next 35 days, learn how to establish a habit of daily Bible reading and prayer. It's going to make you stronger men and stronger women. As a matter of fact, I'll go so far as to say it will revolutionize your life. It will change your life completely. It will make everything better in your life. If you learn to do this, you will be able to handle stress better. You'll be able to improve every facet of your life. So starting today, I want to lead you in 35 days of seeking God for a breakthrough, to prepare, to get strengthened for the coming times. Let's, let's just make 2018 the best year of our lives. Because we have been prepared through the Word of God and through God acting in our lives. Now this will include three simple acts. I, I want to I challenge you to select three five-minute periods each day. Now for me, I have been, I've been working on this all this week. And for me, it's uh, after breakfast, uh, after lunch, and after dinner. I'm taking that time, trying to. I've been, it's, I'll be honest with you, it's been a little tough to make sure that I get those times in and do what God calls me to do. And so you take that time and then you pause for a conversation with God. And you allow God to talk to you through reading His Word. 
And if you don't know where to start, let me just suggest to you, read the book of John. Read the Gospel of John. Begin with that one. And, uh, and let God lead you through His Word. I'm asking you to take five minutes three times a day. We're not asking for a lot. That's not really much. Five minutes. Take two or three minutes to read, two or three minutes to pray. And, and do that three times a day, and it's going to make you stronger than you believed you ever could be. Uh, I have a card in the bulletin. Would you hand me one of those? Thank you. That I'm going to be asking you to complete later and, and turn in to let me know how many of us are going to be doing this together. We're not going to publish it in the bulletin or anything like that. So, but I'm, I am going to be asking you for that commitment. That's why those cards are in your bulletin. Now, i got to say to you men, I've done a lot of hard things in my life. I, I have uh, I've taken some risks. I've faced difficulties. I've faced some really rough difficulties in my lifetime. And I've fought some hard battles in my lifetime. But I want you to know the most difficult battle I fight is this one. To be able to take that time Spend that time in prayer. Spend that time in reading the Word of God every day. And now I'm going to up it to three times a day. And, uh, and, it, and it's a difficult battle. Why is it so difficult? And why do I say men? Well, I say men because I really think it's easier for ladies. I don't know why, except to th say that I think your hearts are probably much softer and probably much closer to God than our old hard hearts are. So it's a difficult battle. Why is it so hard? Because Satan knows that if you win this battle, you'll win it all. Amen. And he cannot get to you. And so it's a difficult battle. It's the key, though, to winning every other battle in your life. This is not a battle for weak men. Don't ever let anybody uh, make you think that it, because you're a man who prays, you're a man who goes to God. You're a man who reads the Bible. Don't let anybody ever make you think that you're a weak man. It takes a strong man. It, it, uh, it is something that will test your character. And so that's what, that's what I'm asking you to do. Now, back to Daniel. One day, Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah was a prophet at the same time as Daniel. They were contemporaries. The thing is, though, Jeremiah had remained in Jerusalem. Jeremiah was not one that was taken into the captivity. Daniel was. But they were contemporaries. Now, what was he reading? Jeremiah 29, verses 10 to 12. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Now, we're all familiar with part of that passage. We're all familiar with the idea that God has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. We've talked a lot about that over the years. And many of us have that as our favorite verse. But we don't talk enough about the last part. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. You see, that's part of that plan too. We can't just expect God to do his part and we don't do our part. Uh, God says he has plans and that those plans have hope. But there are two factors involved. One, there's God's timing. And secondly, there's my praying. God says there's a timetable, 70 years. But when the time is right, you have to pray. This is what God is telling the people. And so here we see God's sovereignty. God is over all. God has set a timetable. He has those plans. But we also see our responsibility. God says, I'll do what I intend to do when I'm ready. That's the timing. But you must pray for it to happen. You have not because you ask not. James said it this way, James 4, 2. You desire, but you do not have. 
so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have, because you do not ask God. So how do I know, then, when I'm waiting on God, or is God waiting on me? Which one is it? If I've asked for something in prayer, and obeyed everything that God has commanded, but I don't have any answer yet, then I'm waiting on God's timetable. But if I haven't even asked, God is waiting for me to seek His face. The second step, focus my attention on God. Daniel 9, 3, the first part, 3a. So I turned to the Lord God. He turned to God. He turned his face toward God. Well, where do we look when we look to God? We look up, don't we? I mean, it's a spiritual realm, and I understand that he's not just up. He's everywhere. But that's what we normally do. So I see Daniel turning his face up. He turned toward God. Let me give you a little hint. Husbands, you want, uh, uh, you want to learn this one because it will serve you well. Uh, when your wife is speaking to you, turn your face and look at her. Because it indicates you are listening, you are paying attention. Have you ever had your kids, I remember, I remember Beth when she was just a little tiny thing, she was so little she probably doesn't remember this herself, but getting up on my lap and sitting on my lap and putting her hands on my cheeks and pulling my face toward her and saying, listen to me daddy. You ever had your kids do that? Listen to me. They want you to look because they know you're listening. So you turn toward God. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what posture you get into. But I think it's interesting that uh, Daniel turned his face toward God. Uh, and you can do that. The second step is uh, seeking God. And we're going to be talking a lot more about seeking God during these next 35 days of seeking God for a breakthrough. But for today, let me just quickly run through several scriptures and give you some of the benefits of seeking God. Amos 5.4 says, Seek me and live. Proverbs 8.17 says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. You're not going to have to seek God very long before you find Him. He's there. He's waiting. Uh, Jeremiah 20.13 you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When you seek God, he's going to run to you. The prodigal son that Jesus taught about. When the prodigal son came home and the father saw him from a great distance. And what did he do? He ran to him. God runs to you when you begin to seek him. I, I remember before Barbara and I were Christians so many years ago. We just made a slight effort, and I mean it wasn't much. And God ran at us so fast, before we knew it, we were baptized new Christians, and everything in our life was topsy-turvy, turned upside down, because God ran at us, and He will run at you if you just turn your face toward Him and seek Him. Uh, Hebrews 11:6. God rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Luke 12, 31, Jesus said, But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Speaking of all the earthly things that you need. Jesus said, You will receive those things by seeking God's kingdom. Many of the difficulties and the stresses that you go through in life are resulting from not seeking God. When you seek God... He will run toward you. Anytime you ignore God, and anytime uh, that we don't seek His face, that we go in a direction without asking for His guidance in that direction, or not asking for His help in a certain area, whatever it is we're facing, then God backs off, and God allows you to go the direction you choose, and God uh, uh, backs away from your family, from your business, and all oh, we know, he backs away from our nation if we don't seek his face. We reap the consequences of our sin. Hosea 5, 15 
through uh, chapter 6, verse 1 says, God is speaking of himself, by the way, as a lion, as, as a protector. And uh, when the people would not turn, he says, Then I will return to my lair until they have borne their guilt and seek my face. In their misery, they will earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. We just need to seek him. And that's why this series of messages uh, I, I'm preparing are going to be about seeking God, seeking God for a breakthrough in our lives. You see, if we turn from him, he just stops showing up. Uh, when you sin, a lot of people, myself included, have grown up with the whole idea of, of you, you sin, you do something, and boom, God punishes, thunderbolt, whatever, you know. But that's not the way it works. What God does is he allows us to go our own way if that's what we choose. If we choose to go away from him, he just withdraws his blessing from you and he lets you go your own way. And so uh, he allows trouble. He allows distress that results from our own rebellion until we turn back to him. God is a loving God and God wants you to turn back and he will always accept you back. If you have turned away from him, he is waiting for you to turn back to him. Uh, so what are you really looking for in your life? What are you seeking? What do you want to have happen in your life? We all have goals. We all have things that we hope will happen. We all have things that we're looking forward to. What is it in your life? And then the next question, is it important enough to spend the next 35 days seeking God for a breakthrough? That's the question. And I hope it is. Step three, express my desires with emotion. Now, this is something that some of us have trouble with. I don't know about you, but I grew up uh, with an emotionless God, is what I was taught. I was, you know, I was to be oh so religious and, uh, uh, and just be still all the time and uh, there's no emotion in it. But you know what? Your one and only son being nailed to a cross is a pretty emotional thing. Our God is an emotional God. And it makes a difference of your tone of voice when you're in prayer to God. By the way, I really recommend praying out loud, okay? Uh, here's why. I don't, I, again, I don't know about you, but I know for myself, if I sit at the table or kneel even and bow my head and close my eyes, it doesn't take very long before I'm asleep, <laughs> okay? Now, that's a good thing if you're going down for the night, right? I mean, it, what a wonderful thing to fall asleep uh, praying, right? But if you want to really have an effective prayer, pray out loud. Pray out loud. Let God hear your tone of voice. Now I want to illustrate that by uh, a young man uh, goes to his girlfriend and he's decided he wants to ask her to marry him. So he says to her, you want to marry me? <laughs> he's probably not going to get much of a response, is he? Okay. But if he goes to her with emotion, you are the most wonderful woman I've ever met in my life and I want you to live with me forever. I want you to be my bride. Would you please, please marry me? You think you'll get a better response? I think so. And I think the same thing is true with God. Because it says in Daniel 9, 3, Daniel says, So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition. Pleading is asking with emotion and being emotional about it. It's more than just a mundane request. And the intensity of your prayer reveals how much you mean it. Now, I want to give you another illustration. A little boy named Johnny had decided that for Christmas, he wanted a Star Wars watch. Maybe a little like my Johnny. Okay, <laughs> He wanted a Star Wars watch. And it was a great watch. It had Yoda's face on the, uh, on the dial. 
and he wanted it so badly and so he started begging his parents for it in October and he wanted it for Christmas and he every time he opened his mouth I want that Star Wars watch you know which one it is here's a picture of it and every time he talks to them he's begging for that watch until his dad uh, finally got fed up and said I don't want to hear another word about that watch we got it we know what you want if you ask for it again you're not going to get it okay so Johnny shut up about it well the next week dad decided at the dinner table that he asked he was going to ask each one of the kids what their favorite Bible verse was so the first kid that he asked the older one popped out with what probably a lot of us would for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life John 3 16 and uh, so, all right, well, that's good. He asked the next one, little girl. And she said, my favorite verse is John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. <laughs> you know, got to get the short one, right? That's easy to memorize, two words. But then he got to Johnny and he said, Johnny, what's your favorite verse? And he, Johnny said, Mark 13, 37. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. <laughs> Now Daniel 9, 3, uh, as I read a moment ago, so I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition in the, in the uh, uh, message paraphrase says it this way, I poured out my heart bearing my soul to God. Have you ever done that? Do you remember the last time you've done that? This gut-wrenching prayer, this prayer that's like Jacob wrestling with God when's the last time you prayed that way I can tell you when the last time you prayed that way is it's the last time you were in deep pain when you're in deep pain you pray you pray those kinds of prayers this is crying out to God what was Daniel pleading for oh God let us go home you promised us God 70 years let us go home. I've been here since I was 15 years old. I'm 85, God, I want to go home. And he is praying this prayer to God. Uh, Jeremiah had predicted, of course, that Babylon would fall. And he had also predicted that his people would plead with him. In Jeremiah 50, verses 4 and 5, In those days, at that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah together will go in tears to seek the Lord, to seek the Lord their God. They will, now watch this, they will ask the way to Zion. They didn't even know how to go home anymore. They didn't even know the direction. And so they will ask the way to Zion and turn their faces toward it. What a promise of hope. You need to pray this. I need to pray this for my life and for my family and for my church. And a, oh, so badly we need it now. Our nation needs this prayer. When will God answer? When my people go in tears to seek the Lord their God. Is there anything around you right now that breaks your heart? It's not too hard for me to think of some things that just break my heart. And then step four demonstrate my seriousness now Daniel showed his seriousness with this with a couple of cultural customs and one of them is a spiritual discipline that we're going to talk about for a moment Daniel 9 3 so I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes now what is fasting fasting is going without food it's just that simple Folks, fasting is not going without something else. It's food. It's not deciding that you're going to get a ratty car or give up something else. It's food. Fasting is going without food for a period of time to demonstrate the depth of your desire to God. Now, sackcloth and ashes, I don't know anybody that does that anymore. Okay, uh, all that is is wearing rough clothes and sitting in a pile of ashes and throwing ashes up over your head. I'm not going to ask you to do that. 
I'm not going to do that. That was a cultural thing. But fasting is still something that we can do today. Fasting means you take the time that you were going to spend eating, preparing a meal and eating a meal, and spending that time in prayer. Spending that time in reading the Word of God. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to ask you for a commitment to fast. Now some of you, boy, that's striking fear into your heart. But I'm going to ask you to fast with me tomorrow. Let's take tomorrow as a day of fasting. Now if, if you don't have to fast the same amount that I do, and whatever you do, don't go around telling everybody that you're in a fast. Because that just ruins what you're trying to do. Okay? But if you just fast for one meal, that's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my level best to fast all day tomorrow. Uh, I know that some of us are in the same boat that I'm in with diabetes. And if you take your medication, you got to eat something. I am going to try to keep from doing that tomorrow. And I'm going to try to balance my medication so that I don't have to. And get through tomorrow as a fast. Because I want to show God how serious I am that I want to break through for our church. I want us to fill this place. I want us to start having another service on Sunday mornings so that we can fill this place twice every Sunday. That's my, that's my ask of God. And that's what I'm going to be spending my time in prayer about. You, it may be something else for you. I'm asking you to pray for our church and for those things. But at the same time, there may be something else that you have in your life that you really need a breakthrough. Maybe you have a sin that you're not able to get past. You're not able to give up. Pray about that. Fast about that tomorrow. And pray for a breakthrough. God will answer. Uh, and so... If you'll, if you'll take that card, I'm going to give you a moment, take that card right now. And there's a couple of requests on there. One, that you will, you will spend time in prayer with me three times a week. I forget now how I work. Oh, I've got it right here. Uh, join me and others to seek God in prayer for the next 35 days. Uh, and then the second option is that you will do that three times a day for the next 35 days. And the third one, that you will fast tomorrow or a different day. I've got a place there you can write down a date. We don't all have to be doing it at the same time. God knows what's on our hearts. God knows what's going on. Uh, and so I'm going to ask you to please check one of those if you're willing to commit to that. I don't want to co coerce you. I just want you to know the importance of what God's Word says concerning prayer and fasting and that we get into this as a church. So would you please fill that out. Check one of those or two of those. Check all three of them if you want. And uh, we're going uh, to gonna have the ushers come down the aisle. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just pass them all into the center aisle after you've completed it. And the ushers are going to come down and pick them up. Well, thank you in advance for all your commitments. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I know that God is going to answer your prayers and your fast. I know that he will. I will say too that if uh, you feel like you need and more that time to make a decision step, to uh, thank God just for his love later. and promises. Remind yourself in your prayer how gracious God is. Okay, Daniel the ushers 9, will come 4. on down the aisle. Now I just pray to, to the, the front Lord my God and confess and start picking those Lord up the as you great work your way and back. awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. You know, we're going to be moving into Thanksgiving season very soon. But Thanksgiving should be a year-round attitude. We should be thanking God for everything all the time. Daniel 9.9 9 says, The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against Him. And that leads into step six, the last step, humbly confess my sins. God responds to humility. It's clear in the Word of God that He resists the proud. Daniel 9, 5 and 6, We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people 
of the land. He gets very specific with his confession of sin. Daniel 9 uh, verses 7 and 8. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. We and our kings, our princes, and our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. You see, Israel, folks, had committed adultery. That is, they had chased off with other gods. The Lord, their God, is a jealous God. Our God is a jealous God in that He wants us having nothing to do with other gods. Don't stray from the one and only true God. Daniel 9 verse 10, We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws He gave us through His servants the prophets. Daniel 9, 13 and 14, Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come on us. Yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster on us. For the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does. Yet we have not obeyed him. And then in verse 16, our sins have made your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Does that sound familiar? Daniel knows that they don't deserve anything, but he appeals to God's grace in verse 18. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. We can't say, oh God, we're such a good people, won't you bless us? But we say it is only your mercy, it is only your grace that will bless us. Now I want you to see before I close that there is a response to Daniel's prayer. In verse 20, While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and making my request to the Lord my God for his holy hill, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, a word went out, which I have come to tell you. For you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. As soon as he began to pray, a word went out. And Gabriel was sent to tell him, You are esteemed before the Lord God Almighty. You, your prayer is being answered as we speak. A word went out as soon as you started to pray. Notice he was still in prayer when Gabriel got to him. And he just kept on praying. And God wants to say to you today, I have a promise for you that too often has been applied to just America. It is a, it is a promise of God to all his people. God's people are not only in America. God's people are in China. God's people are in India. God's people are in Russia. God's people are all over this world. And this promise is true for all of us. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name, that would be Christians, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I want us to do this for the next 35 days. North Lakes, are you with me? Amen. We will pray to God three times a day for the next 35 days. We will fast tomorrow. Let me add one more thing to this very quickly. If you get through a day and realize that you haven't fulfilled your commitment, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't, don't get to feeling like some horrible, guilty person. Just pray. When you realize it, just pray. God knows, God understands, God forgives, God loves. 
He is the God that we serve. And so for the next 35 days, let's all seek God together for a breakthrough in our lives, in our church, in our nation. Would you stand with me, please? <clears throat> let's bow in prayer. Lord God Almighty, I am so thankful for the record we have of the story of Daniel. For all that he went through in this, as we've learned in this series, for the, the many tests that he underwent, for the many times that you blessed him and you saved him and his friends throughout that period of time, for those 70 years that Daniel served you from a foreign nation, I thank you, God. Help us to learn from him. Help us to learn from your word and to make application in our lives every day. Help us to be men and women who are seeking your face. Give us a breakthrough, please, Father. Help us, Father, to break through the power of sin over our lives. Help us to break through what this world uh, uh, throws up against us. Help us, Father, as a nation to break through and become a Christian nation once more. We love you and we praise you and we adore you. In the mighty name of your son Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day today.